Hey guys, I'm S2Jesse. Uh, welcome to part two of Make and Raise Blaster. Uh, today we're actually going to be doing some machining, so let's get going. Alright guys, so I got the uh, model all finished up. So here's the back panel, the side panel, the front panel. Um, the bottom round section, it's just that's milled out of a solid piece of aluminum. Got the um, inner frame with the trigger and a little cutout here for kind of the safety area. There's a left frame, right frame. Um, there's a little knob in front that just uh, threads, that just has a thread in it and that screws onto the front plate. You got the uh, barrel, I uh, got the barrel tip, and then we got the barrel back, which let um, me hide this. Um, that's just gonna be threaded also, and that will thread directly into this uh, solid piece of aluminum here also. So that should make it nice and sturdy. Got a little safety knob um, and the safety, and a little window on the left. Okay, so how this uh, safety is gonna work is, let me hide the left frame here. So this plate will screw on, um, and I cut out a little hole here in the inner frame, and I can just screw into this and now the cool thing is this little safety knob here probably can slide up and down so um, yeah that's the uh, gist of, uh, of the blaster all modeled ready to go so now that the model's finished I wanted to give everything a test print uh, that way I could kind of test how everything fit together before I started cutting it out of aluminum uh, it's, a, it's a pretty big process to kind of lay out all the tool paths so I want to make sure everything fit so I tapped and uh, tapped all the holes Tapping in PLA is kind of messy, it really messes the holes up, but it's uh, going to be good enough to kind of get this uh, done for a test. Screwed everything together. Uh, the real blaster uses torque security bolts for all the um, connections. I have all the bolts, I just don't actually have a torque security uh, driver, so I'm just using temporary um, 632 screws to hold everything together. So I basically just bolted it all together and everything fit perfect so far. Uh, used a quarter 20 tap here this is where the bo the barrel is going to connect I wanted to make sure that was a nice secure um, connection so that you know you didn't just lean on the barrel and snap it off so this is the barrel adapter I'm just again it screws into that top round aluminum section and it's just gonna be pretty strong and the barrel just kind of press fits on there I don't know if I'm gonna just do a little tack with the TIG weld to hold it on there or maybe I'll just JB weld it or something um, the, the connection is gonna be pretty tight so I think it's gonna be fine so that's pretty much everything together. Here's just one of the older test scripts I made. Um, seems to fit pretty good. I'm going to remodel that. Here's a couple other uh, Mauser ha broom handle grips uh, from some other kits I had. And, uh, as you can see, they fit perfect as well. So, uh, so anyway, so it's all printed and fits together perfectly, so ready for aluminum. Alright, so I got all my materials together. I got some of this from speedymetals.com, onlinemetals.com, and even amazon.com with prime shipping. Sometimes it's kind of convenient. Get get your uh, stock in a couple days with free shipping. To cut all my rough stock, I usually just use this uh, DeWalt chop saw. This thing is ridiculously nice. I, I got a carbide blade for it, and um, it cuts through aluminum like butter. It's so fast and convenient. It's a little dangerous. You should probably clamp it down, so I um, wouldn't recommend just holding it with your hand. But... So the first thing I'm going to do to the barrel is I'm going to use a lathe and I'm going to cut the little grooves on the tip of the barrel. And next I just chucked in my little Harbor Freight lathe and then faced it up a little bit so I'd have a clean surface for the center. And then I had to create a, uh, I had to grind a new tool because it, the little slots are 1 inch inch thick and I didn't have a tool that thin so I just ground it on the angle grinder. So then just using the dials on the lathe I just uh, cut the grooves. Grooves are about uh, 0.09 apart, and they're 132nd deep, so those are pretty easy to do. And I just grabbed a little bit of 220 uh, sandpaper and just kind of gave it a quick a little uh, shine up uh, here while it was on the lathe. Now that we got our parts, we got to create the tool paths and G-code that the CNC needs in order to cut the parts. Fusion 360 has amazing tools for this, but it doesn't support 4th axis, which is what we're going to use to make the barrel. For the 4th axis stuff, I'm going to be using SpruteCam, which is another piece of software I have. For all you Tormach guys, um, I'm using the Super Spacer 
and there's no machine definition for it so I've got to use this tilting table and then do a bunch of little hacks to make it work so I'm not going to go into detail here in this video but if you want me to just leave me a comment I can make a whole separate video just just for that so the first thing we do now with our part is we need to add some stock so we're going to add a primitive it's going to be a tube we're going to add a little bit of uh, material to the end and let's add just a teeny bit to the inside uh, just to make sure we have enough material all right, let's start doing some operations. So first off, it's kind of hard to drill into a round stock like this. The drill bit will want to walk. So let's spot drill it. So we're going to create a roughing operation, which is hole machining. Going to go in there. We're going to choose a tool from a tool library. We're going to choose number 26, which is like a spot drill. And then we're going to choose, let's start with this little hole on the top. Now I'll set our feeds and speeds. Um, Let's go 5100 RPM, that's the maximum machine. And we're gonna go real slow because this is way out at the tip and it's not supported. I'll just go in and set the depths. Just gonna poke in just a little bit. Now we can actually simulate the uh, cut. So there you go. All right, so I added the rest of the uh, operations. Let's do a little quick test and see how it's running. Okay, there it is, spotting all the holes. And then it's going to switch to, after it does the rest of these, it's going to switch to the drill and it's going to drill all the parts. Cool. See how it looks. Okay, looks like it worked. Now I'll move it over to the CNC machine and the first thing I do is find the center with this digital probe. So now that we got the center, um, let's go ahead and just run that program we made. So hit cycle start. I'm using a PCNC 1100 from Tormach. Uh, got the tool changer on it. As you can see, we're switching to that um, spot drill, and then I'm holding the piece in a fourth axis. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to spot the little teeny hole on the top. I'm going real slow because you can see it's not really supported very well. And we're going to flip 180. Once it flips 180, you're just going to spot that other hole on the bottom. Then turn to the side, and we're going to spot all those little vent holes. Now I'll be honest with you, uh, you don't really need a CNC to do something like this. It probably even would have been quicker to do it on a drill press since you wouldn't have to do all the cam software. So the takeaway there is don't think you can't make something like this because you don't have a CNC machine. Um, in fact, I might even end up making one just for the heck of it with just real simple hand tools just to show that it's possible. Uh, so now we switch to the uh, drill and it's actually going to drill the holes all the way through. Alright guys, cool. So that was a basic look at the whole process from uh, modeling to CAD and CAM all the way through CNC machining. So thanks for watching, that's uh, part two. Um, if you liked it, subscribe, watch part three, there's gonna be a lot more machining. Um, to be honest, I'm not really sure uh, who my target audience is, so I'm just kind of recording the process of what I'm doing. But if you'd like to see something specific, uh, let me know and I can uh, tailor it a little bit more towards um, that. But um, here's the little barrel we made, just test fit it on the 3D printed parts, it fits perfectly. So um, anyway, look forward to making part three.